I define cyber techniques as either machines that assist human abilities or machines and devices that allow humans to interact with computers through motion, such as movements of my hands, of my fingers, or even of my face. Today on Tech Tuesdays, we're going to focus on, we're going to build our very own cyber technic technology using an ordinary computer mouse. And we're going to control our computer by moving our finger up and extending the arm and moving this hand left and right. And the buttons will be moved three fingers on this hand. I'm Jerry Glickstein, and you are watching Tech Tuesdays. There are a number of different supplies you need for this project, such as wire, rubber bands, chopsticks, tin foil, and the, and the like. So instead of just listing them here, I'm going to go over all of the supplies you'll need as I need them in the cast. You can also see a complete list of supplies in the PDF slash Word document that has now been included in every Tech Tuesdays cast, starting with this one. And okay, first we want to take the parts that we need out of our computer mouse and I've removed the ball already and this screw right here should allow you to pop the entire case open and if your mouse looks like this which generally most mice do you can usually just discard the top because it's just a piece of plastic that makes things look neat then this cable you want to keep plugged in and be careful not to break it because that connects to your computer then you can remove the circuit board I've taken the middle mouse button out for now because I haven't figured out how I'm going to use that yet but we're going to take this out to the shop in a couple of minutes and we're going to extend these buttons so that they can be on a different hand than the bottom of the mouse. Next we want to create the Y rope which is pretty much a piece of tin foil that can completely wrap around your upper arm with a piece of scotch tape. I folded down the top so this way it's removable and I can reuse this scotch tape for this band every single time that I, I want to use this mouse and I've taped a rubber band onto this on one side and the other side of the rubber band is tied onto a piece of string about one to one and a half feet long. You don't have to get fancy with your knots but I felt the need to make a bowline because I feel that it's a pretty neat knot and it looks kind of cool. Okay now it's time to plug in your soldering iron and get ready to do a little soldering. While that's heating up we're going to prepare one more part and that is the wrist cuff. This one's a little better made than my arm cuff because I felt that because it was going on my wrist and that's where a lot more joints are, it was more likely to break. So I put a layer of masking tape in the center and on the sides to strengthen it. This one has to fit just around your wrist and I, fi I find it's helpful to add a little bit extra space just for different sized wrists and also because it adds to the convenience of when you're trying to tighten it. Whenever you put this on, don't tighten it too much because you don't want to cut off your circulation, you just want it to fit snugly. If it's a little uncomfortable, you may want to make it thinner or use a padding inside. Now let's get to solder. Okay, I've got everything pretty much all set to go for me to solder it together. On the push buttons, because I felt the or orientation may be important, I made a small uh, line. It's hard to see in the camera, but I made small lines uh, in periodic places where the push buttons go so this way I can match up like say the line right here to this button right here and I'm going to make sure that I connect all the leads in the proper order so that each lead of the push button is connected to the same place in the circuit board that it was originally connected before I desoldered it. I find it's best to do them in rows of three because each button has three uh, three wires coming from it so I've placed three wires into my vise and put the circuit board on top and solder those in and then I'll do the last two buttons and then we're going to put the wires to the buttons. While all my soldering is drying is drying up and cooling down we're going to prepare the second axis which is the X axis and that's where the chopsticks are going to come in handy so you're going to take two packages of chopsticks like I have here I have two of them that I tape together and then I spread them apart and I put a rubber band in between them and attached to this, the rubber band is a string. I'm going to loosen up the rubber band a little bit more but other than that 
that's pretty much all you have to do, although after trying it this way I found that it was a lot better if you were to extend these by taping them to an additional pair of chopsticks. Now we're going to put everything together. The first step to doing that will be to carefully take the circuit board that should have all of your wires and extensions in it and place it back into its socket. It should fit nicely into the board and you want to be careful not to break any of these wires because it'll be a pain to put them back in once we've put all this stuff together. Uh, this wire you're going to want to have come around and hang off to either the right or left wherever it um, is shortest and doesn't stretch across. Then we're going to put in the Y axis and that's this string right here that's attached to this cuff and I'm going to put this string and I'm going to fit it under it may be a little tricky, but I'm going to fit it under the roller that is horizontal. And just to save a little bit of time in the video, I've already attached the other axis, the X-axis controller. Now that both axi are installed, we're going to want to make sure that neither of them intersect with each other or with any of the other wires. To ensure that this is possible, I took I took a toothpick and wrapped it with tin foil and then put a band across it made of scotch tape. And I'm going to attach this right around here and get this piece around here. And make sure that the scotch tape is pulled taut. So now we have a sort of pulley system for this axis to ensure that the uh, string does not intersect with the board, which creates a flat surface for the board to sit on, which won't interrupt our circuits that detect where the rollers are positioned at. Then we're going to want to tape our cuff onto the underside and this piece onto the side like so. Action! Alright guys, so we've finished the whole of the CyberMouse project, and now it's time to test it out. So I've got the arm band, and I have my, I tie the, on the other end of the string, I tie the slip knot, and I've got my Y axis running. And for my X axis, I have this band on my right wrist, and the left and right buttons that we extended, I've attached over here through loops. Although because the ends of the buttons were a bit sharp, I've put some tissues under there. Just like tiny little corners of the tissue I just balled up. Although a new tissue, not an old one. So now let's zoom in on the screen, and not all people like certain games, but I've loaded up RuneScape because I thought, what better to navigate a jungle than to do hands-on exploration? Are you there? Mm-hmm. All right, that's good. So, as you can see here on the screen, this works really, really well. It's surprisingly awesome. Unfortunately, I was having so much fun with the Cyber Mouse that I did not make a conclusion video. So get out there, grab an old computer mouse, make a Cyber Mouse, and above all, have fun with it. I'll see you next time on Tech Tuesdays.